Hello, my name is Steven. Welcome to HiFinder Tech Talks, where we aim to understand the technology that makes the hydrogen economy work. Today, we will be speaking about gaskets. Now, gaskets have it in themselves, as they say, um, and I will be speaking about this topic with someone who is really revered. He has won several innovation prizes, and he is CEO and Managing Director of Eisenhut, a company that works in the uh, hydrogen sphere, obviously, but also on the medical side and for automotive manufacturers have made gaskets for years and he's been working in this area really a lot. It is my very special pleasure to welcome Dr. Torsten Hickman. Yeah. Hello. Welcome, Torsten. Hello. It's uh, great to have you here. Yes. And uh, yes, today we want to talk about gaskets. So <laughs> let's start from the basics. What is a gasket? Well, in fact, the gasket is the most underestimated part in the fuel cell or an electrolyzer. Because you always think of the membrane of the bipolar plate yes. and then just put it together and gasket is no big thing. Uh -huh. But then the story begins or the problem occurs. Uh -huh. So we have to see, um, we have to find a solution to get a system which has no leakage. No leakage from A to B, but also no leakage of intern to extern. So uh, this is the function of the gasket to take care that there is the material inside and doesn't go out and keeps on the place where it should be. Ah, okay. Wow, okay. So that means essentially it is, uh, it is a seal. Right? Yes. It is, it, 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 it it's sealing it. the system. Yes. And uh, if we look at the slide, I can yes. also explain it a ah, little yeah. bit in the in, uh, yeah, in a small drawing, yes. you see here on the right side, you see here uh, a cut through a fuel cell or a cut through a, an electrolyzer. Yes. So, and, okay, sorry for the abbreviations, but BPP <laughs> is bipolar plate. Bipolar plate, yes. Yeah, GDL <laughs> is gas diffusion layer. Yes. MEA is a membrane unit. Yeah. And, well, which is not abbreviated, <laughs> it's a gasket. But this is just uh, by occasion, well, because all this... see the, what's important to yeah. you. <laughs> That's true. But at the end of the day, well, yeah. this, the, the community uses the abbreviations, so I, I stick to them as well. Yes. Okay. However, you see in the drawing um, here, what is what is the gasket doing? So you, you have... Um, uh, the mare in the middle, mm -hmm. and then you have the gasket, so, and then you have the bipolar plate. So yeah. first role, uh, first function is, or what it is doing, mm -hmm. is that um, it is uh, responsible that uh, the gases which come from the bipolar plate go into the direction of the membrane, mm -hmm. that, there's, uh, that they stay there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second function, you can see on the drawing as well, is that there's no gas going outside. Yes, yeah? yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and um, well, sometimes well, when we have graphitic bipolar plates, there's also gas kicking here in between, mm -hmm. so that they are between two bipolar plates. However, in this uh, picture, um, it is um, not the case. Mm -hmm. But then you have the gasket as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, see, I see you brought, also brought one with here, which uh, yeah. I'm very grateful for. So, so we, just saw, uh, we just saw this. So is this, is this what we are seeing here? And we need to hold it a little bit closer yeah. so, that, yeah, so we can see better. Yeah, basically camera. it is it. Um, mm -hmm. You see here the blue uh, thing, and yeah. you see here the inlet and the outlet area, yeah. and then um, the flow field. Yeah. And, uh, well, this is also showing that here on the bipolar plate, it is important that here in the manifold, the material comes from the outside through mm -hmm. different plates. Yeah. And then um, here it goes into the, into the flow field area, but there must, uh, the way must be go beneath the plate into this area. So yeah. that's, all, uh, that's the way how it is working. Mm -hmm. But it is not allowed that go from here directly ah, to the flow yeah, yeah. field. So, so we have it, it the seals. connection. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's keeping that. Okay. Yeah. So, so Thorsten, where, where do we find gaskets in, 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 the, in the hydrogen economy? Yeah, here? well, uh, basically all over. Mm -hmm. I've, um, I really watched your interesting stories about valves yeah. and all the other things. Yes. So also here you have... Um, uh, gasket and ceiling, so yeah. we have it basically in each component. Okay. But uh, today I focus on the stack, yes. and in the stack you have it between the bipolar plate mm -hmm. on the one hand and the membrane unit on the other hand. Okay. Basically, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. 
All right. So, so uh, you have different different kinds, obviously, uh, as far as I understand. Uh, well, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I mean, uh, the one thing is to have a solution. Yes. The other thing have a solution which is also very cost effective. Yes. So uh, when we are talking about big volumes, then the issue is that we want to have it uh, integrated with other components. Okay, okay. So, um, and I have here a small slide yeah. which can explain it again. Yeah. So here we have on, a, on one picture uh, the different options you have. I start in the corner here on the below. So this is the first option where you start with. This is separate gasket, mm -hmm. yes. Um, maybe we can also yeah, have a look good. at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like here you see it. Uh -huh. So this is flexible. This is uh, oops. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then mm -hmm. this is the way we do. Do and later on so we this, can so this uh, just, discuss this, this again. And yeah, that's the way. That yeah. Is, uh, okay. Okay. But uh, then uh, the the community says we are, but this is very uh, difficult to handle and so on, mm -hmm. which is only the half of the truth. <laughs> However, okay. uh, there are a lot of action to integrate it on the other components. So yes. what other components do we have? We have the bipolar plate, we have the GDL, and we have the membrane unit. So that's what we see on here. We see on the left corner here the MEA. Yes. We see the graphitic bipolar plate where we have also shown a picture of it. Yes. Then we see here the metallic bipolar plate. Yes. And you see here in the corner that there is a gasket all around. Yes. And uh, another option is to use instead of the MEA, the GDL. So this is then uh, stick to the GDL and this will be added to the MEA on a separate step later on after the gasket is on it. Okay. But then we do not have any longer uh, two components or, or a separate component for the gasket, but we have only an integrated solution with an already existing component. Okay. That's the idea. Is, is this what we see here? Because I see you brought this. A yes, lot. this yes. is. Uh, yeah, this is in fact so a, a, for a smaller this. system yes. uh, on the GDL integrated, yeah. and uh, this is already. This is also for a, a gasket for an um, um, electrolyzer test system. Yeah. So we do it here already at mm -hmm. a, um, okay even at a low volume to have the integration here. Mm -hmm. And you see that there is no material flowing into the GDL. So there's an exact uh, line between the gasket on the one side and the GDL on the other side. So this is working quite nicely. OK. Yeah. So, so I know, I mean, when we're talking about these kind of things, I mean, we've seen some material here. and. Yeah. Uh, what what are what kind of materials are we talking about? Is is anything good for hydrogen or? Uh... Uh, well, yeah, maybe we can look at another slide. Okay. Again. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, in fact, uh, when we talk about gaskets or ceiling, you see, well, it even it is hard to uh, read all the names, but yeah. you see uh, by see, the you, circles you... already there are a bunch of different <laughs> materials, and I have I have added three arrows here. So the red one is the uh, so-called VMQ. Okay. So VMQ. This is for silicone. Um, this is a very often and very well used material. Yes. However, for higher temperature, you can use the fluoroelastomer material or yes. what we very often use because it has a better pricing and has a better performance against yeah. um, hydrogen is uh, the so-called EPDM. So yeah. it is kind of uh, synthetical rubber. Okay. Uh, well, I will not explain you the, the detail what is EPDM staying for. Yeah, it's a yeah. very complicated yeah. issue. I mean, I, mean, I, However, I, I see um, you have a, a couple of abbreviations yeah, going so, here. So, well, this is what is uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, the rubber expert use. However, you see already that there's a big range of possible material. Yeah. We stick to the three materials where we have good experience. Yeah. And it is also a question how to produce them. And okay. Uh, okay. the reason why we have the red, the silicone is, in fact, uh, the material which is very often used, and it has a very good pro process uh, mm -hmm. option. Yes. And, and uh, you brought this this thing here. This is yeah. this is this silicone or, or yes. what are these? these this are is uh, yeah. This is uh, a, a, a sample how to 
explain a different, I mean, if we talk about gasket, yes. the story already begins. Mm -hmm. The first thing was the material, but yes. now we talk yeah, what kind of gasket? Kind of, yeah. And then we talk about hardness. Hardness. Yeah. Okay. So this is and, and the, the gasket world. The gasket people they have a special value for is yeah. it is uh, sure. Okay. Uh, however, you do not need to remember it. But you, what is important is it's a different hardness type. And you see here on this on this uh, video and yeah. on the screen that uh, the, the, the mm. uh, transparent silicone is very soft material. Very soft. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah. if you look on the other corner, it's a black material. This oh. is very hard. Ah, it's almost okay. not bending. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, okay, the okay. question so. is what to use. Yeah, yeah, the experience okay. says good is always in the middle, <laughs> Yeah, because then uh, you can do good processing. Okay. Th so th these uh, numbers, are they the sure the, value? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. so there are numbers written on it. I don't 20, think they can you can see it on the C, but yeah, the okay. transparent is 10, then 20, and so on. Okay, okay. And the middle ones is between 50 and 60, the green and the blue ones, which mm. are the ones which we usually recommend to our customers, because then you have a good way yeah. how to produce them and a very good way how to uh, make a ceiling on it. Okay, yes. Okay. So, uh, just if you can please just take us maybe one step deeper again into like you know like putting the gasket on and how does it hold and I mean I've also wondered like how does it actually prevent you know this gas from going through and uh, yeah how do you put it in place? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah maybe we can um, look at the next slide uh, yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So one option is that. Uh, you use a kind of O-ring shape yeah. or also a flat gasket. Yeah. And here um, you see uh, on the left side this original design. Yeah. And then this is a compressed version, so under pressure. Yeah. And then this uh, on the right side is the so-called compression set. That means what is happening if the gasket is going back when the system is open. You usually do not want to have the system open. However, mm -hmm. this is a very important value because uh, if you look at the long uh, usage application or a long time usage, then you want to have uh, that the performance will be not only at the beginning, yeah. it must be also after 5,000 or 10,000 hours, so this is very important. Uh -huh. And you see it is already very important how to do here, and I don't think it is necessary to deep now what to consider at the O-ring. There's also a lot of literature in the internet you can see. Mm -hmm. So, but this is a very good way to start and to get uh, used to it. Yes. Yeah, but this is so. This is like a cross section of an O-ring. Yes. And uh, essentially, it's lying on some material. <laughs> And, and when it gets compressed, it changes the shape. Yeah, that, this, yeah. That's, that's very important. So if you design a system, yeah. you must consider that you have enough space, which is here. Yeah. So it is not good to, to go to the original size of the O-ring and yeah. then uh, press it into the plate. Yeah. And what will happen, the material is like water. Uh -huh. So it cannot be compressed. Uh -huh. It can only go to the side. Yes, so you yes. have to have enough side um, that it is able ah. to be compressed. Okay, so, so this is very crucial yes. that you have enough uh, space on the left and right side of the gasket yeah. so or the ceiling that the o in this case o-ring but this is a general rule so that uh, it is able to be compressed but uh, the dimension or the, the area will keep the same since it cannot be compressed but it will be get thinner, let's Th say. Thinner, okay, yeah. okay. And uh, well, I mean, like the other gaskets that we saw, they were, they were not old, they were flat. You know? or, yes. So, so yes. This is, uh, these are other kinds of uh, gaskets? Well, um, the thing is, I mean, if you, uh, and this you can see in the literature mm -hmm. when you read it, um, it's good if you have two components. A yeah. O-ring is perfect. You, you compress it and then it's nice. Yes, yes. But we're talking about the stack. So we have hundreds of plates oh, on it. On top of each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. then you have the, the, the force for compressing it at exactly the same area yeah. for 100 times. Oh, OK. Yeah, and yeah, this yeah. means you need to have a lot of energy and if you have graphitic plates, they might break. Yes. Metal plates might work. However, it's not good for them. But um, this 
is not um, it's 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 an option, but there are also other options. Let's say this way around. Yes, 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 yes. And the other option is that um, if we see now um, at the next slide yeah. that we take a kind of profiled gasket. Um, okay, this is again a cut, so you must imagine that it is going all around it with this shape. Yes, yes. Um, and um, here, w and you see the dimension on the right side, it's very small, only yeah. 1.26 millimeters, yeah. and there's even a foil in between yeah. for, uh, for better stability, which is uh, also used in, in the community. However, we talk about 0.7 millimeters, so and if we um, look also at the connection, here's a blue connection in the middle, then that's not much, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters, mm -hmm. which is enough. And if you look at the next slide, yes. you can see when it is compressed, you can see it very nicely. So the, uh, especially on the top, here's a blue, that's where the force is. So mm -hmm. that's the area where the gasket is now uh, doing is 100% function. Ah, so, yeah? so, so, that means, so you have the material pressing from the top here, yeah. and you have this little area here that we can see here that uh, is having enough force to seal that, yes. yeah, and, yes. and here, and here, and here again. So, so you get four times. Four times. Four times. Ah, okay. At a tiny, tiny area yes. with only a little force. So oh. if we uh, compare it, it's about 10% or 20% of the force which is needed for an O-ring at, uh, um, at this area. Ah, so um, okay. that's, that's the idea here. So uh, it, it this is, is working and mm -hmm. we had a customer uh, who had a, a, a kind of O-ring solution before and his stacks were not, uh, were not gas tight and uh, they were leaking. And then we offered him this solution and then, well, I'm a little <laughs> proud of it that they called them the Eisenhut stacks, although we did only the gasket because they were working. Yeah? Okay, 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 okay. However, okay. okay, this was one story to tell, um, but however, that's the way how to approach. Yeah. If you have the right design and have the right thinking, then this will work. And I mean, we have always uh, a lot of tolerances in the system. Yes. Yeah. So the w one thing is a bipolar plate. Then the MEA yeah. as a membrane, as a pure, oh, but yeah. most uh, challenging is the uh, gas diffusion layer. Yes, and you have to compress the gas diffusion layer. And with this, all different tolerances, and if you have a gasket which is flexible yes. to um, live with this uh, different tolerances, which are comparatively quite big, yeah. then this is a good solution to do this approach here. Yeah, and I mean, we have also in this series talked about stacks various times, and then we see, I mean, you know, the more you stack them, I mean, the more, and depending on what's happening between the plates, you know, i.e. Yeah. gaskets, changes the whole characteristics of, of the stack, you know, and especially when it is, uh, you know, in a dynamic environment, yeah. uh, you know, we had a gentleman talking about it when it when it's in trains, for example. Yeah. That's like you get really hard shock, you know, yeah. and you don't want uh, the thing to be like yeah. a like a what is it uh, the the musical instument? <laughs> yeah, and, and then, and then uh, yeah. you have the issue with temperature as yes. well. Yeah, yes, I mean, yes, uh, if we talk in the automotive world, we have so-called cold temperature, yes. minus 20, 30, minus 40 degrees. Yes. So then the function must be still the same. This is not the operation temperature of the stack. Yes, yes, However, yes. you start from this point and start slowly to get temperature higher, and mm -hmm. then the gasket must also be uh, able to do this. So, OK. Yeah. So uh, actually, I have two more very quick questions. Uh, mm. And the one thing I've always wanted is, so you have a gasket, like uh, let's say like this one here. Yeah. Yeah, if you, how, so how do you put it in place, you know? Because I must imagine it to be quite fiddly to go through every plate and then fiddle this thing into there. How, how, how is that done? Mm, okay. Um, the one approach mm -hmm. is that um, if you have an integrated solution, yeah. then you have to consider a kind of area where you can put it in. So the gasket is uh, laying in there, yeah. and this is a, 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 a U-shaped uh, area, area where okay. in, in the, in the, in the yeah. plate, yes, uh, yes. usually in the plate you do it. 
That's an option, or if you go uh, on the uh, gas diffusion layer or the MEA, you have to connect them with holes so that the material is going through the holes and then there is a connection between the CDL yes. or yeah, the yeah. MEA. That's the first option. The other option is again design. So if you have a separate gasket, and I think we have also a picture on the no. next one, yeah, one yeah. like here, this could be a thing. So you see these two little holes here, yeah. here and here. So you stack the system and put some needles outside, and yeah. then you put one gasket after another, ah, okay. and then um, so that the, the bipolar the, plate in between. And once you're ready, you tear the, play, the things out, and it is working. Yeah. Ah, okay. So you so, some extra. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so okay, this okay. is also a thing, and uh, that's also an issue uh, to do this. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay, there we go. So that means actually, <laughs> the main thing is uh, brains design. Yeah. yeah? Try and like design that problem out or, or, or at least somehow uh, combat it. Okay, so, but then Thorsten, uh, my, my last question was, so I know that stacks obviously are a core element, whether in electrolyzers or uh, in yeah. diffuser systems, and then everyone's talking about the, you know, the cost of these things. And obviously I think the gasket being essential to that is contributing uh, to that. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, the cost side of things? Yeah. What makes gaskets expensive? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> At the end of the day, material and process cost, okay, yeah. uh, so we are working quite hard on this uh, topic. However, uh, if we look at this uh, uh, slide again, yeah. Yeah, maybe we start at the very beginning, so even if we only have one piece, we yeah. can offer the customer solution because we make a kind of picture frame and then we cut out the final design out of it, so it's very costly. And later on, when we do it uh, by uh, the right processing technologies like yeah. injection molding, fully automatic and so on, then that's the way to go here. However, it must uh, be considered that it is, the stack is not a topic of MEA, bipolar plate. It is also a topic of the gasket and sealing solution. So you have to look, have a look at it and to find a good solution, yeah. Okay, so, so, just, so just to nail you a little bit on that cost thing, so you say, okay, when you have one that you can cut it out, that is, yeah. that is okay, but then when you go into injection molding and so on, yeah. that, that is more cost effective? Or where, well, where is it? Um, it is definitely more cost effective. Mm -hmm. um, you have a kind of startup invest uh, in order to have, to have a mold yeah. and uh, automatization technology, but yeah. if you have this, you can start at the very beginning at a very low cost base. Basis. So that's uh, the, the answer for this question. I mean, if, if we have the right production technologies, then we can also make very good costly. Okay, cool. I guess that's a perfect point <laughs> uh, to, and a message to all our stack manufacturers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, you know, of course, uh, we know that uh, there's like lots of things to be managed, but I mean, the, the gasket is, 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 is very important. I know from fitting systems myself, the first thing you take, test on the stack is, is it leak proof? You know, is it, is it leaking or not? First, and that's always the thing. So do. it's, it's, yes. uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, for that, it's been a great pleasure, uh, Thorsten. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time that you've been here to talk about this. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this session as much as I have. Uh, if you did, please leave us a line or a like or follow our channel. Uh, also, you need to know on highfinder.com you can get in contact with Thorsten and many other people who are making the hydrogen economy work. You can find the right components and services. Take a look there. Um, yeah, and uh, other than that, I would like to say thank you again for coming. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you for watching. Yeah. And may you have a wonderful day still. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>